Hi there, welcome back to my channel. In this video we are constructing the envelope for the box full of goodies. So just to give you a little reminder on what we're creating, this is an envelope styled pocket with two pockets in front for some smaller photos and I'm going to make an acetate frame here um, where and use the pattern paper in a way and for some reason this this photo mat always keeps getting stuck there. Um, we use the pattern paper in a way where we still see the pattern paper when we put the photo in and then we have a large pocket here at the back and you can put more photos in here than I just did but this is what we will be creating in this video the envelope hi there welcome back to my channel scrap and coffee we are working on a project that I've called a box full of goodies in the last few videos we have been working on the box, at least at this moment I still have to do the editing but I think that's going to be two videos and now it's time to start working on the so-called goodies to go in the box. Uh, so I'm going to start with um, what I call the envelope. So I'm going to make, um, at this moment I'm thinking five small projects to go in the box. You can also make them as a standalone project or make them as an insert to go in one of your other albums projects uh, it doesn't have to go with the box so this can also be a really fun standalone project to make so just a small reminder uh, i am going to give you the measurements i'm going to say the measurements they are not going to uh, pop up on your screen because i think that's a really annoying job to do and i just don't like it i don't want to do that um, so if you can write down the measurements if you want to but there is also a cutting guide available for a small amount in my Etsy shop uh, so you have all the measurements written out for you already and by getting the cutting guide you support me and my channel and it helps me to uh, keep giving you projects uh, so if you want to do that um, the cutting guide is available in my Etsy shop I have a a link in the description box down below and for as long as I am having the videos coming up on my channel um, there will be a special price on the cutting guide so uh, I think like maybe two days after the last video I'm going to um, bring up the price it's going to still be a small amount but um, as long as I'm working on it on YouTube and the videos are uploading, there will be a special price on it. Okay, enough talking. Let's get to work. So if you have the cutting guide, you want to, it's, I think it's the first one in the cutting guide under the box. It's called envelope and that's what we're going to make. I also have some pattern paper already selected because I'm going to need some pattern paper while I'm constructing this project. You can do it differently so you can decide on it later, but the way that I do it, you're gonna need it. So I have my pieces cut and scored, but of course I'm going to uh, give you the measurements. Uh, so first up, we are going to start with our piece A. It's a large piece of cardstock, uh, eight and a half by nine inches. And um, something else that I wanna mention quickly, I tried to design the projects that go in the box in a way where you can use your letter size cardstock or your A4 size cardstock. Uh, so far that's been working out so I hope I can, can continue with that because I have three of them completely figured out and on two of them I'm still working on it. Anyway, uh, I have my piece of cardstock here lying with the eight and a half inches along the top and I scored half an inch and eight inches. Now I'm going to turn my piece where the nine inches ends up on top and I'm going to score at four and three quarters of an inch. Just like that. Now we have a side that is four and three quarters and this side is a little shorter, only four and a quarter. I wanna have the long side here on top and I'm going to flip my piece over so now i can see the bumpy side of the score lines and that long side is on top so i can see that here the score line here is at four and three quarters and i'm going to re-score my score lines here up to the horizontal score line that's where i stop so you want to do that on the long side both of them at the half inch and at the eight inch mark 
We are going to do some work on this piece. So the only ones that I'm also preparing are our pieces A1. These are one inch by two and a quarter. And with the one inch side on top, I'm going to score them halfway at half an inch. I always go over twice on my score lines, um, just to break down the fibers a little bit more. And I use 80 pound weight cardstock here, but you can also use 65 pound, whatever you prefer. I think maybe 100 or 110 might be a little bit too heavy for these projects, but I'm not saying it's not possible, but yeah, just keep it in mind. Um, tip. And a pencil and a ruler. Okay, I have my short side here on the bottom. So bumpy side of a score line, bumpy side of a score line, dented side of a score line. On this short side here, I am going to find the center of the piece. So this is eight and a half inches. So my uh, center should be at three and three quarters. No, <laughs> not even close. Eight and a half is four and a quarter. Yes, that's the center. Four and a quarter. And I'm going to do that also a little bit lower on my piece so I can make a straight line. So I'm going to connect my, my marks here. Okay, so we've marked the center here. Now on that line, I want to measure from my bottom cut edge one and a half inches. So I'm start measuring here and I'm this is my one and a half inch line. So right here at zero, I'm marking it one and a half inches. And then I'm going to connect that mark with my score line here, completely at the top. So I'm going to connect that mark with the score line here. To create an angle in that piece. There we go. So now on this line, I'm going to cut. You can do that with your scissors. If you have the long scissors, for example, from Tim Holtz, then that's pretty easy. Uh, maybe I should get one of those one of these days. But I'm going to do it with my uh, ruler and my knife. It's just for me. You can also do it in your paper trimmer, but um, this angle might be a little tricky to do so. So I'm getting my straight blade. Make sure that I have the metal side of my ruler here. And I just punched a little hole with a paper piercer where all the lines come together. So I can put the point of my blade in that hole. And then line up the metal side of my ruler with the pencil line. And pull the blade back. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. And then that's out. So we still have our score line intact there. See, so that's the point that you want to go to. And now what I want to do is make, let's keep it in this direction. I've been doing that the whole time. I want to make two acetate windows here on both sides. Um, that's optional. If you want to leave it out, you just skip all the parts until we are going to um, fold everything uh, closed. Uh, but I'm going to draw some frames and I've decided to on these two frames I'm going to do half inch frame. So from the cut edges, again I'm going to use my Tim Holtz ruler here with, with that easy grid. I'm going to line up the grid of the half inch and draw a line from the cut edge. Now here I have score line and I want the frame to be half an inch from the score line. So you can measure half an inch from the score line of like I do, I measure an inch from the cut edge. Because I see that a little bit easier. Then we have the score line here. So now I have to line it up with that score line. Half an inch. And like I said, it's a little bit harder to see. But there we go. And I can draw the line from one side to the other side in this case. There we go. And I'm just going to do the same thing here. So here you measure half an inch from your score line or one inch from the cut edge. And you just want to make sure that all your pencil lines intersect with each other. 
half an inch from this angled cut edge. And now we have the line here in the middle, that's our center. But I want this also to be half an inch in total. So here I'm going to measure a quarter inch from that pencil line. And that's really hard to see. I can also do it from the other side, but I have the metal here. And I end up with a little bit more than a quarter inch. So I'm going to do this the best I can. Quarter inch. And then also towards the other side. So what I try to do is use the grid on my ruler, the lines that go this way, to line up with the score line here, with this line that I've made. And that helps me to make sure that I'm straight on that line, because there are all these little holes in here. Makes it really hard for me to see that uh, line that I've already made there. So I'm going to do a little check, half an inch. Half an inch. Okay, that looks good. So make sure that we're not going to cut on that center line, but I still need that line later on. I'm going to cut out these two spaces here. And I'm basically going to do the same thing as I just did with our angle. I'm basically going to make a little hole with my paper piercer where my pencil lines intersect with each other. And I'm just going to do both sides. There we go, you don't really have to do it, but I started doing this after I saw somebody else doing it and I, it just gives you a really clean cut on your corner. But it also helps me with lining up my blade because I really put the point of the blade in the hole. And then I can line up my ruler. And you feel where you need to stop because you go, the blade falls in that second hole that you've punched. So here, I'm just going to do First one frame and then the other frame. I'm not going to cut all the way. Now continue there. I'm not doing that. I'm just doing one and then the other one. Okay, so that one is out. Okay, so both of them are out. And then I've prepared a piece of acetate. I need to clean it a little bit. It's a little bit dusty. Now I can also clean it later on once it's on. But the acetate is 7 and 1 8 of an inch by 3 and 3 quarters. And of course if I place it down like this now, um, that's not going to work. Right? So we need to... Uh, Make a cut there. So what I'm going to do is find myself a marker. Something that I can use to uh, mark the acetate to where I can cut it. So I'm just making sure that I have some overhang on this side, this side, here at top, and then also here. And now I'm going to make a little dot on the acetate. To where I can cut my angle. Right there. And this time I'm just going to do it with scissors. If it's not completely straight. That's okay. I'm going to start cutting at the point here. And then I will cut up to. The little mark I've made there. Which is pretty hard to see. But um, I have it there. So again if I would have a longer scissors. It would be a little easier. I'm basically just putting my scissors at the point. And have my eye on the dot. And just hope for the best. That's one side. And I think I'm going to flip it over. So I can cut from the same side again. And it just helps to keep your eye on the point where you want to go to. There we go. I need to pull it a little bit. But that's fine. Okay. And then I'm going to check if I did a pretty okay job. And it looks like I did. So now I'm going to get some uh, tape. You can do quarter inch tape or one eight inch tape. Uh, and I'm going to place it around the perimeter of my acetate piece. So this piece just needs a few steps. If you are doing all of this. So I'm just going to go around 
the perimeter here. Okay, I have some overhang here with the angle, so I'm going to cut that away. Oh, that's not gonna work. Okay, carefully burnish that on. And make sure that I don't have any tape showing when I'm going to place this on it. There is enough space everywhere. A little bit of a black border, yes. And then on my cardstock, I'm also going to do some tape here on that middle part. And that is going to cover up my center line there, but I can make a new one later on. So that's not a problem. Give that a burnish too. Then we can remove the tape backings. Okay, so I removed all the tape backings and I'm just going to hold it above my piece, making sure that I have that little bit of black showing on all sides before I stick it down. So take your time, drop it, and then I'm going to carefully burnish on the tape. So you're in the middle a little bit and you see that the color of your tape will change. And that means that you're getting a good stick. Okay, there we go. So next up I'm going to cut a piece of pattern paper. So I've selected this pattern. These, these are groups of um, flowers, floral pattern. And I figured out that perhaps I can just get two of those groups in each, one of those in each window. I have my letter there, I need to remove that. So this is what I want. Um, now I have to, I think I have to cut my paper a little bit weird for that, but that's, I'm okay with that. I want it, I want to cut it to where it fits here on the large part. So that's what I'm going to measure. I want it to be, I'm going to measure from score line to score line, which should be seven and a half inches. So I'm going to cut my piece to seven and three eighths of an inch in width by four and five eighths of an inch. Now, in order to get these two flowers here, because I think that's a nice one. Can I cut that from the edge? I think I can. Maybe I want to cut it a little a hair off. Is that going to make a huge difference? It is. But that's just me being precise, right? So, I'm going to cut my piece to... Let's see going to slide it over a little bit. I'm going to aim like, okay, I want it to be falling in the window like this. So I'm going to cut it about there. I'm just measuring it a little bit above my score line here. And I know that's probably hard to see, but I'm just making a little tick mark there. And measuring how much that is, that's about one and seven eighths of an inch that I'm going to cut off. But I also have my strip there. So from my 12 by 12, I would cut off about one and a half inches. So I'm going to cut that off, then I'm going to cut it to the 4 and 5 eighths is what I said, right? Let's recheck. Yes, to 4 and 5 eighths. So that's what I did. See, so this is the part that I'm going to use and then I'm going to cut that to uh, 7 and a half and then I'm going to cut off 1 eighth of an inch on this side. I know that's what, just to get it more centered in the frames. So here we have it. Little piece, I'm not sure what the, how it's going there, like this. But you get the idea, right? So this piece is going to fit right there. Yes. Well, it's too long for this, but I need it to fit here. Okay, perfect. Okay, um, let's see. 
this is two and three quarters so at two and five eighths in the center okay let's find the center of my piece which is a little bit harder to find with this measurement um, just under three and three quarters I'm marking that and again I'm doing that on two places and then I'm going to connect it with my ruler uh, two and five eighths from the bottom is what I need to be so I'm connecting the dots that I've made with my ruler so I, I'm straight in the center and now I have the zero here at the bottom and I'm going to measure one, two and five eighths of an inch. And then I've removed the other pencil mark so I don't get confused. Where's the other one? There. Okay, and then what I need to know is this is four and a quarter. So I need four and one eighth of an inch from the side, on the side. So my zero is here at the bottom. I need four and one eighth of an inch. Mark that spot. And connect that with the mark that I've made here in the center. And do the same thing on this side. So four and one eighth of an inch. Okay. So two and five eighths of an inch from the bottom in the center, four and one eighth of an inch on the sides, mark it and connect it. And then I'm going to cut on the lines. And in order to do so again, I'm using my straight blade. So that's one. Two. Let's keep that piece safe. This one I can place here on this side. Hopefully I did all my measuring right. I think I can cut off a small hair at the bottom. That's fine. Yes, okay, that's better. And what I will do you can discuss if it's really necessary, but I'm going to give my angle side a little bit of ink. The rest you're not going to see, so I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to get some glue. Don't go too high up like I just did. And then carefully place this with the side that you want to show on top of your acetate. Make sure that you stay in between the score lines. You have a little bit of black showing here. And then give it a quick check. That seems fine. So I have a pattern that worked perfectly for that. You might not have that. so. Then you don't have to worry as much as I did about the cutting. Just making sure that all my edges have a nice stick. Which can be a little bit tricky if they fall, the edges of your acetate and of your pattern paper fall together. Uh, but that will be fine. I burnish it a little bit here in the center. But not too much. And then what I'm going to do is again find the center here of my um, of my piece. So I'm just ma I'm marking it from 
the cut edge of my black cardstock four and a quarter is the center and I'm just giving that a mark and renew that line there that we just covered up okay there we have it okay then we can go to our pieces a1 finally and we're gonna need some tape on here okay so for your pieces a1 on the dented side where the score line goes in the paper we are going to put our tape on both sides we are going to make little hinges from this Giving that a quick burnish, fold towards the bumpy side so your tape is going to end up on the outside. And then I'm going to angle this slightly. So I'm on the folded side, I'm going to cut from the folded side towards the cut edge with a small angle, a slight angle. And what we are going to do is we are going to bump these pieces with the folded edges up against each other lined up with the pencil line that we've made here on the piece and we are just going to center it where we have a little bit of space on top and bottom. Get a little bit of a burnish and then the other one. So folded edge against folded edge, centered on the piece. Okay, now next up, I'm going to place some tape on my half inches here on the side, but I want to have that on the dented side. So here on the long side, I'm this is the dented side of the score line, and that's where I'm going to place my tape. So I'm going to start just above the horizontal line and bring it up to the top do the same thing on this side and we're going to burnish that later on I'm going to flip it over and now I here I have the dented side so I'm going to place my tape right here okay, now give that a burnish Make sure that your tape has a good stick. And then I'm going to get my scissors. And here we have the intersection of score lines. And what am I going to do is I'm going to cut a V-shape towards that intersection. So I'm cutting that out. And I know the light is terrible. Try to show you up close. So just go up to that intersection of your score lines and cut out a V-shape on both sides. And then I'm going to angle it here on the long side slightly. And this side I will do in a minute. And then we can fold on these flaps towards the bumpy side on all of them. So this one comes up. And then I like to turn it over to give it a burnish. And now I have this sticking out here a little bit. So I'm just going to get my scissors and cut that off. So that li lines up nicely there. So now we can also fold. Did I just do that? Oh no, no, it's right. I just thought, oh, I did it all wrong, but it's it's right. <laughs> okay, so we can burnish those as well. And now we can fold on the bumpy horizontal score line towards the bumpy side. And maybe you want to do it like this for a second, so we can give that a nice burnish as well. So it's folded in half. And now we are going to stick this part down on top of the large part. So again I'm going to lay that flat just to make it a little bit easier to work on my work surface. I'm going to remove all the tape back in here. So carefully bring it up. I'm going to hold this flat with my hand and just start sticking it down on one side. But we've pre-folded everything so we should be quite okay but you never know. 
and then give it a burnish. And we can fold that in. So now we have this piece prepared right here. Okay, next up we have piece B. This one has a little bit of a weird measurement. It's seven and a half inches by eight and I believe 13 of a 16th. It's just a hair over eight and three quarters of an inch. And you're gonna score with that weird measurement on top. Let's say the eight and three quarters on top. At half an inch, at six inches, and at six and one eighth of an inch. Then we are going to go to piece B, finally. <laughs> on piece B, on the dented side, so we have three score lines. Here we have that half inch section. I am going to place my tape along the cut edge. Give that a burnish. And taper that so just from your score line or just above the score line cut with an angle towards the cut edge and I'm going to fold on that score line towards the bump so my tape ends up on the outside burn that fold and then I'm going to also fold on both my score lines right here on top so just okay so we are going to connect these two pieces with each other and this can be a little bit tricky so i'm going to fold my half inch score line and give it a good burnish lay light on my work surface to where i can see the tape and then i'm going to fold these flaps open here and i want to line up the folded edge of my piece with the folded edge of piece b here of that half inch section um, and have that nicely lined up where I'm going to also use my score lines here. I didn't stick my piece on top of each other very well. It's a little bit curvy, but that will uh, work out. I'm going to use my score lines to line it up here on top and bottom as well, from this point of view. And then here. So I'm, what I'm going to do is remove this tape back in here a little bit. And then line it up as best as I can. Okay, so the pocket is on here and now we have our flap here and when we close the flap we have a little bit of a gap there between the edge of the flap and where the angle of the pocket starts. That's on purpose. Now we also need to make the angle here in the flap, the same angle. So for that I'm going to open up this flap, I'm going to get my ruler and from the fold line that we have here, I'm going to measure and make a pencil mark in between the one and one eighth of an inch mark and the one and a quarter inch mark. So in between those two, so that's officially one and three sixteenth of an inch. Right there I make my pencil marks and then I'm going to find on the cut edge the center of this piece which is at three and three quarters from the edge. Mark that and then you can connect the pencil lines. You can do it with your ruler and a pencil and then cut, up, cut it or just line up your tick marks in your paper trimmer and cut. Both will work. But I'm making the line here just to show you. So I'm going to line this up in my paper trimmer and cut on the pencil lines. Okay, so I did that and now when I fold it close we have a nice gap between the flap and the pocket. And that's what I wanted so that uh, I have a little scrap piece here but we can put something in the pocket that sticks out over the flap and keeps the flap close so you can, can do that on one pocket or in both pockets um, however you want to do it right so there is no need for a magnet and I think it's just a fun uh, design element as well and I'm going to see what I'm going to do with pattern paper here on the on the closure but um, yeah this could be something fun but we'll see I don't think I'm going to use that there but 
it would be possible. So in the, this is by the way, because you haven't seen that yet, the scrap piece from uh, what I used to cut the, the frame out here, which I'm going to show you right now. Okay, so this piece of cardstock here, I am going to stick that down. I'm going to ink this, all the edges. So this can fit on that first part, that first top pocket. Where it just gives us a little bit of a black border, it just goes into the pocket. I probably need to work it a little bit to get it where I want it, how I want it. Okay, so I have some paper here so I can see the edge of the of the pocket that I'm working with a little bit better than all the black on black. And I'm aiming for about a 1 16th inch border. Okay, so that is on there and then I wanted to use this black that I had left over from doing the outside of the box. I am going to, uh, because this has a stripe, I want to make the window out of a whole piece. So my stripes go in the same direction everywhere. Because if I'm going to cut strips from this, I'm going to stick it down right here in this orientation. And then I'm going to stick it down right there in that orientation. That's going to look completely weird. If I would use a really solid color, like the pink that I've used on the box or the green that I've used on the inside, I could do it out of strips as well, but in this case uh, I'm going to do it out of one piece at least. That's what I'm hoping for. I need, I believe, 4 and 1 8 of an inch in height. It's 1 8 of an inch smaller than the actual piece. Yes, by 7 and 3 8. So I'm going to cut that off of this piece here. I'm going to do this on the, the side that's going to be showing. That's just going to be easiest. First I'm going to mark the center once again, which is just under three and three quarters. Can be a little bit trickier to uh, get that even. So I'm marking that just under three and three quarters, right? Yeah. Just marking that line here, and then I need to be two and five eighths upright on that center line. So it's a it requires a lot of measuring. Two and five eighths up on that line, on that line in the center. Two and five eighths up, and then from that mark here that I've just made, I need to go from corner to corner. Going to do that. So again, I've pierced the hole. It's just going to make sure that my blade is in the right position, and I'm going to bring it to the corner. to use that somewhere like something that could be working would just stick it here on the flap and then combine it with another piece of pattern paper so I'm not throwing it away yet you never know I might use it let's see if we did a good job here okay I feel that I want to cut off a hair along the bottom because I'm going over my fold so that is what I will do. Okay, that looks a little bit better. Okay, now we have a half inch frame here. And this is also half an inch, right? Yep, so everything is half an inch. 
Um, so what I want is a 3 8 inch edge on my paper. But what am I going to do is I'm going to measure it on my metal side. So it's going to be just a little over 3 8 of an inch. Not much. But on all the edges I'm marking 3 8 of an inch. Here. Okay, now on the center it's going to be a little tricky. So, because I want that to be 3 eighths of an inch as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the zero on that line in the center. And I'm going to go in between the 1 eighth of an inch and the quarter inch. And make a mark. And then go a little lower and repeat that. So in between one eighth of an inch and a quarter inch. And then connect your lines. And check if that is indeed three eighths of an inch. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, now my lines are really hard to see. I'm going to do another check. I'm measuring the line up here to the 3 8 inch that I've made right there. And that is just over 3 inches. I think I need that to be... Closer to three and one eighth of an inch. Yeah, that's because I did it on the metal side. So that's why I check. Don't do it on the metal side. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, I'm going for it. So again, every intersection I'm going to pierce a little hole. Give myself some space and just uh, pray that we did this right. Start cutting. Okay, now let's see what we get. Okay, well, it's not perfect, but it's not bad either. I'll take it, I'll take it. So I'm going to remove all the pencil lines that I can still see on my piece. And give it some ink. So I'm also inking the inside of the frame. And then I always come in from the back. So I don't smudge uh, the front of my piece so it's going to show too much. Okay, some glue on here. So my black border is not even everywhere and that's just because with cutting and measure measuring you might be off here and there a little bit like at least I am. 
So that's not 100% perfect, but I'm still happy with this. Okay, so this is the uh, the envelope. I'm going to finish up decorating, but first I want to make sure that I have all the construction on video because that's the most important part. And then I will see if I have time to film um, other parts of decorating. Uh, but what I will probably do is here behind this large pocket, this piece is not going to work. Of course, I need to cut a different strip, but I think I will do something with the same blue pattern there. And then I will see what I will do on the flat but. We can put a larger photo mat in the larger pocket here and some smaller photos here in the front pocket. So, um, yeah, it, uh, just a fun project here. So uh, I'm going to keep the, the, the back plain. I will probably do some pattern paper under if I have enough. But this is the envelope. I hope you like it. And um, uh, yeah, join me in the next video where we will make another goodie to go in our box. So for now I want to say thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye!